I've got a serious situation here about pilot uh, I knew if I didn't react that we would die. How did this passenger miraculously land a plane without any flight experience at all? You're gonna find out in this video. If you've ever flown on a charter plane or thought about it, this is probably your worst nightmare. These are the small planes that are often used for traveling relatively short distance, and they're often flying into airfields that the big commercial airliners don't go into. You might be the only passenger on board, and a lot of times there's just one pilot. Darren Harrison had just finished a fishing trip in the Bahamas and was flying back to Fort Pierce, Florida. Now he had flown as a passenger on small charter planes before, but he's not a pilot. And the only thing he really knows how to do is use the microphone to talk on the radio. Darren's sitting in the back, enjoying the flight and relaxing when this happens. I saw he kind of did a move like this and said, guys, I gotta tell you, I don't feel good. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, I got a headache and I'm fuzzy and I just don't feel right. And I said, what do we need to do? And at that point, he didn't respond at all. He was already done. Now, what happened next is actually the first miracle on this flight. But before we talk about that, did you notice that the pilot said the word guys? That's because there's actually three people on this plane. You've got the pilot, you've got Darren in the back, and then you've got a third guy that's sitting up front next to the pilot, and he's actually a friend of the pilot. Now, if you're wondering what happened to the pilot, I'm going to share more on that in a minute. At that point, he wasn't responding to us yelling at him. So I moved to the front, and by the time I had moved forward to the front of the airplane, I realized that we had now gone into a dive at a very fast rate. All I saw when I came up to the front was water out the right window, and I knew it was coming quick. Now, when this incident happened, the plane was initially at an altitude of about 10,000 feet, and the approximately 30 seconds it took for Darren to realize what was happening and grab the controls, the plane lost about 4,000 feet in altitude. At that rate of descent, if Darren hadn't done anything, they would have ended up crashing in the ocean in about 60 to 90 seconds. But there's another problem that Darren has to deal with, and that's airspeed. Now, from what I can tell, my best guess is that the pilot didn't have the autopilot turned on, which is why the plane started falling out of the sky so quickly. Now, in this case, the max cruise speed of the aircraft they're flying is about 175 knots. But the data show that in this initial dive, they got as fast as 295 knots. Despite the autopilot being off, Darren being in the back, and the guy in the co-pilot seat freezing up, Darren is still able to assess the situation, lean over the pilot, take control of the plane, and stop it from diving in the ocean. And that's why this whole 30 to 60 seconds of flight for Darren is a complete miracle, even though it's just the beginning of his nightmare. I sit down and I'm trying to put on the headset that the pilot was wearing. And so I pull on the wires and I pull up and they're all frayed. The plug's gone off the end of the headphones. And so now I don't have a headset to use. And at that point, I knew if I didn't react that, that we would die. The reason why the wires are frayed is because somehow when Darren and the other passenger are pulling the pilot out of his seat, they pull the wires on his headset and basically rip them out of the control panel. Now the pilot is still unconscious when they get him out of his seat, but at least he's still breathing. However, it's obvious that he's in distress. So Darren and the other passenger are going to have to act quickly if they want to save him. Fortunately, the other passenger was wearing the pilot's second headset. So Darren is able to get that from him and he can hopefully talk to someone on the radio. Let's see what happens next. Traffic, Airman 333, Lima Delta, Fort Pierce Tower. I've got a serious situation here about pilot. Uh, John, I have no idea how to fly the airplane, but I'm in the airplane at 9100. Number 333, Lima Delta, Roger, what's your position? I have no idea. I see the coast of Florida in front of me, and I have no idea. Here's the thing, Fort Pierce doesn't have any idea where Darren is either. That's because they're still too far away and they're not tracking the plane on radar right now. That's because typically the pilot right now would be talking to Miami Center. But somehow in the confusion and the chaos, the radio frequency got switched and that's how Darren ends up talking to the Fort Pierce Tower controller. Number 333 Lima Delta, do you know how to uh, operate the transponder? Can you squawk 7700? Uh, stand by with me, Repeat that frequency to stop. Number 333 Lima Delta, Fable input 7700 into your transponder. 
Okay, the transponder code 7700 is reserved for emergency aircraft. Now, if you put that code into your transponder, it essentially is going to alert nearby air traffic control facilities that you have an emergency, and it would make it very easy for them to identify the location of your aircraft. November uh, 3, Lima Delta, can you uh, say again what the uh, situation is? I was a six Number three, Lima Delta, I came in a little broken. Uh, what, what was the situation with the pilot? He is incoherent. He is out. Number three, Lima Delta, Roger, uh, try to hold the wings level and see if you can start uh, descending for me. Uh, push forward on the uh, controls and uh, descend at a very slow rate. Yeah, I'm descending right now at 550 feet a minute, passing 8640. Number three, three, Lima Delta, Roger, and uh, continue the descent and uh, try to level off at 5,000 feet. And for what heading do I need to be at? Give me a compass heading, because I have no controls. All my electronics went when we went in a roll. Remember, three, Lima Delta, maintain wings level and uh, just try to follow the coast, either north or southbound. We're trying to locate you. All right, so the controller is trying to figure out exactly what's going on, and he can't really give Darren a heading to fly because they still don't know where he's at or what direction he's going. That's why he tells him to just look outside and fly north or south along the coast. Now, this is going to hopefully help Darren recognize some landmarks at some point that he can use to help the controllers figure out where he is. Unfortunately, Darren ends up flying more to the south, so as he gets further away from Fort Pierce, the radio transmissions start cutting out. But somehow, air traffic control is eventually able to figure out where Darren is on the radar. However, by that point, he's just too far away and he's too low to talk to Fort Pierce Tower anymore. So he's flying along and for the moment, he has no one to talk to that can help him. And to make matters worse, the clock has taken against him. Now, Darren doesn't realize it, but the pilot has suffered from a torn aorta. Fortunately, with time running out, Fort Pierce comes up with a plan. They're able to reach the tower controllers at Palm Beach, who had a solution. Palm Beach Tower controllers are able to program one of their radios to broadcast on the Fort Pierce frequency, so that way they could contact Darren directly because they were much closer. Now, thankfully, one of the controllers there had experience as a certified flight instructor, and with a little bit of coaching on the radio, he was able to talk Darren down for a landing at Palm Beach, and here's how that went. American 1845, you can make the left turn there, hold short of one zero left, it's gonna be a couple minutes. Uh... You just witnessed a couple passengers land that plane. Not a problem. Uh, go ahead and uh, continue. We'll hold short one zero left American 1845. Man, they did a great job. Did you say the passengers landed the airplane? That's correct. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no. No, great job. No flying experience. And if you enjoyed watching the video, then be sure to watch what happens when an airline pilot has a heart attack on takeoff. And I'll see you next time on Pilot Debrief.